What's the worst thing to wake up to? Leaf blowers and lawn mowers operated by overachievers on Sunday mornings. Another day. At five years old opening your eyes only to see that you're on the front porch, in your mother's arms, and an ambulance pulling up into the driveway, I stared at it, and passed out again a few seconds later, I woke up late the next day, turns out I had a severe epileptic seizure, scary shit. Your wife grinding coffee beans 12 inches away from your head. Your wife grinding your head 12 inches away from coffee beans yourself as a student in underwear, in front of the entire second grade, and everyone is laughing at you. A call from work wondering where I've been all morning. My mom woke me up because my grandmother passed away. Waking up to 30 plus missed calls with a brutal hangover and can't remember what you did last night but you know it wasn't good. Panic. 2 a.m. smoke detector battery chirp, and you have seven smoke detectors on 10-foot high ceilings so you have to get a goddamn ladder out of the garage at 2 a.m. in the morning. Change your batteries on a schedule to avoid that shit. Your clothes, bed sheets, and bed stained with period blood. A severe lack of oxygen. A few years back I was riding my bike home from work on a Friday night and crashed while trying to avoid some guy cutting a corner. Ambulance rocked up and took me to the hospital. Lots of scratches, scrapes and bruises, and a broken collarbone. They kick me out after a few hours and just before I get out they give me a small pack of codeine tablets. I asked them at the time to give me tramadol instead as codeine makes me nauseous but they refused and told me to go see my GP if I wanted something different. It being Friday night my GP wasn't going to be open again till Monday morning. I went home and the pain was bad enough that I ended up going f*** it and taking the codeine over the course of the weekend. The last dose of which I took about 9pm Sunday night. Monday morning rolls around and I immediately call my GP and book an appointment so I can get some tramadol. While I'm there talking to him, he warns me make sure you wait at least 24 hours from taking the last dose of codeine before you take any tramadol as the two of them together could stop you breathing. Duly noted says I, that night I stayed up quite late watching crap on YouTube etc and made myself stay awake till about 3am and took some tramadol just before I went to bed so that I could get a decent night's sleep. Apparently I didn't wait long enough. I don't know what time of night it was and hence how long it took. All I remember is shooting awake and feeling like I couldn't get enough breath into my lungs. I gasped and gasped and gasped and eventually managed to start feeling human again. But it's still one of the most terrifying wake-ups I've ever had. A full bladder. Then I'll have to get up to use the bathroom instead of going back to sleep. Fever. Sore throat. Shortness of breath cat peeing on my ankles through the sheets. Your house burning down. When I woke up to find my dog had diarrhea everywhere, large puddle on the floor and also in between the side of my bed and the wall, it was completely inside the outlet. I literally had to shut off the electricity and rewire a new outlet that day. Oh shit. Artillery. Bacon cooking on a George Foreman next to your bed, forgetting you set it there and then stepping on it hurts like crap. A tornado alarm. Shit is so f***ing scary. The cops banging on your door. The end of that dream where you really need a pee, and start to feel the satisfaction of warming release. Waking up after having a dream where your crush tells you she, he loves you. Sunlight. I work the early morning shift and I'm already driving to work before the sun even comes up. A couple of times my phone has ended up under my pillow and I've missed my alarm only to wake up to the sun glaring in my eyes. That sudden feeling of f***ing up always sucks. Someone yelling at you. It can ruin a whole day. Hey you. You're finally awake. Hearing a throwing up noise. The wrong side of the bed. Under. The sounds of your parents having sex. Death. Two years ago, I woke up to my parents crying as they were informed that my grandfather had passed away. We packed in 30 minutes and took the first flight out for my grandfather's funeral. It still haunts me to this day. A few years ago I was awoken at probably 5 a.m. Sun was just starting to appear, by the most rancid stench I have ever experienced. It was so rank that it woke me out of a sound sleep. 
I am unwakeable. I will silence alarms in my sleep. I have slept through hurricanes. But this stench slapped me in the face so hard that I was up and ready to fight it at the first grasp of consciousness my body had. At first I thought it was some serious ass dog poop. But my bedroom door was still shut and it would be super weird since my dog doesn't have a history of pooping in the house. So I go on a manhunt for the source of this god awful aroma and I absolutely cannot figure it out. Nothing on the floor, under the bed, on the bed, in the closet, in any piece of furniture etc. I open the window, partially to let in some fresh air and partially to see if it's coming from outside. Then I walk by my python's enclosure one more time and realize that it is the epicenter of this horrific nightmare fume. I couldn't see much through the barely sunlit room, so I flip the light switch on to see the side of her enclosure covered in a dried, crusty liquid and some bits of unidentifiable chunks absolutely disgusted. I have no choice but to get closer and inspect this hazmat crime scene to find out what the f*** happened and see if she was still okay. She was fine, but coiled up at the opposite end of her enclosure with her head poking up at me, pleading, begging, please, please human, kill me. She had escaped the day before and had been fed the day before that. If you don't know much about caring for snakes, you have to let them rest and digest about 72 hours after eating otherwise they can and most likely will vomit. Do you know what snake vomit looks like? It's just a whole animal with the head half partially dissolved in acid depending on how long it was inside the snake. In this case, I looked over and saw a rat's ass from the hip bones down. Organs spilled everywhere and goo covering every inch of the enclosure on that side. She had decided to puke the rat's ass directly onto her heat rock where some of it had been deflected everywhere and the rest had been actively baking while I'd been sleeping. The sight coupled with the scent made me lose it. I vomited all over the floor. I go and grab some cleaning supplies. Toss her into a bin and soak a t-shirt in perfume to tie around my mouth and nose while I attack this revolting puke apocalypse. As I've got my head in her enclosure, straining to hold my breath and trying to squint as much as possible so I don't have to see it as much. I turned to throw another wad of dirty paper towels into the bag I had opened up on the floor behind me to see my dog snacking on them. I vomited again, overall. It took me an hour to get the enclosure clean. I had to give her a half hour soak but babysit her while trying not to fall asleep so she didn't try to submerge her head in dawn. I had to brush my dog's teeth and the smell didn't leave my room for a week. Even with my windows open. Three wallflowers and fan going 24-7. A horse's head. The thing there is that it's not the head. It's the fact that someone snuck, sneaked in and managed to put an 80 to 100 pound bloody mess of a head into your bed while you were sleeping. An alarm. Waking up in an ice bath with a missing kidney and blood all over the place. I was babysitting my niece one time when she was about four. I packed her off to bed and went to watch a movie on the couch, where I promptly dozed off only to be woken a few hours later in complete darkness, having no idea where I was, and with a tiny, clammy little demon hand grabbing at my ankle. I've never been awake faster in my life, only to be greeted by a very confused child who just wanted a story and who no one had seen fit to tell me could get over the baby gate like a goddamn ninja. We don't tell her mother about the time Aunt Hazel almost kicked her darling daughter through a window. Mine is very similar but also the opposite. When I was 18, I would regular visit my sister who lives about two hours away. I would usually stay for the weekend, babysit my infant niece and they could have a chance to go out. This particular time, I dozed off on the couch. I woke up in a blur around midnight and realized I didn't have the baby monitor. I went upstairs and saw the baby's door was open. I tiptoe in and the crib is empty. I full on panic ran around yelling, checking all the rooms and doors all still locked. I find my phone and there's a text from my sister dog meds are in the window by the sink. One half pill a.m. I finally remembered. I had come that weekend to take care of the dog while they, baby included, went to Ohio. I've never been so relieved in my entire life. To the sound of the cars. I live near a big road with loads of traffic, and it's just awful. At 5 a.m. I'm already awake because of it, and this is happening every single day. 
got woken up by my dad early in the morning to inform me that my mother had passed away in the room across the hall from me. Worst part was that she was only sleeping there to look after a pup that was recently born from the two dogs we had at the time. Otherwise my dad might have woken up and been able to do something about it. The pup ended up crying late at night before or during her heart failure that I ended up passing off as it's really not that uncommon but it really makes me question if I could have done something or not to help her before it happened. Think about it regularly. Calling work and breaking down to my POS boss wasn't great either. But hey, shit day. Your dog gagging and about to throw up in the middle of night. Then hearing him eating it 15 seconds later. Sounds like the problem solved itself. Dog shat on the carpet.